Welcome back everyone. This is Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and in today's video I'm going to be creating an underwater Christmas shadow box. I'm also going to be doing all of my coloring of my images with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I typically color my images with Copic markers. That was the first color medium that I started with. I'm fairly fast at it and comfortable with it. I know the color combinations really well that I like to work with, but it's not always an affordable option for people. Um, Copic markers can be fairly expensive and it takes a while to build up a, a small collection. So I thought I would play with my Zig markers, which are uh, a smaller set, and they're also a little bit more affordable. Also with these Zig markers, they blend really, really well. I typically have used my Zig markers for water coloring, but I wanted to try it with coloring them in the full image. So here I have a bunch of images stamped out already. I'm uh, coloring on Bristol Smooth cardstock, which I have found is a really great cardstock to color with your Zig markers. I stamped them in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'm using the stamp sets Christmas Fishes, Sweet Christmas, and Toboggan Together. So in coloring with my Zig markers, what I had found in my experimenting was uh, finding two colors to do a blend was the, the best thing that I had found, and I wanted a really dark color and then a really light color. Because these blend so well together, if I had two colors that were similar, you, you didn't really notice that there were two colors there. So if I used a very drastic dark color and a really light color, then I could really see the difference between the two. My yellow fish at the top there is a great example of it. I actually had used kind of an orange to do my shadow layer. So I actually start off with laying down the darkest color first in a shadow area. It doesn't have to be exactly where a shadow would be, just somewhere to show that there's a contrast. And then I'm blending out with the lightest one. Uh, typically when I'm blending out, I'm being careful. I actually start um, opposite of the darkest area and blend in to the dark color, being that it's going to pick up that darkest color. Now you can see that I do have some scratch paper off on the side there. Every time I blend into a dark color, I'm wiping my brush off onto that scratch paper because otherwise you're picking up that dark color and you'll spread that throughout the rest of your image. So I'm always dabbing off onto a scratch paper to just get rid of that dark color. Now I really like how these look on this Christmas tree. You can see I laid down a dark color and then I'm blending out with that lightest color. And when I blend out, I'm just blending right into that dark, dark color. It'll pick it up and blend them together really, really well. So this is also a, a quick way to color. There isn't as much work to do the blending. They blend out very, very well together. So it does help speed up that process if you don't want to take a lot of time to color. One thing to be mindful about is don't drag your hand over your image right after you color it. It will take a little bit to dry because these are water-based markers and they're not soaking into this Bristol Smooth cardstock. So just give it a few minutes to dry before you run that through your die cutting machine or uh, before you start moving your images around. So once I had die cut them using the coordinating die, I'm just taking a couple of the smiley faces and stamping them onto the images. Now I'll work on the assembly of my shadow box. So using that shadow box die, I die cut a solid panel from both Peacock and Mermaid cardstock. My window panel uh, for my box is also from the Peacock cardstock. And then I'm going to use these pieces from Craft Cardstock, these are the inserts that go in the shadow box, and that's from the Craft Cardstock. I saved that rectangle from die cutting my window, and then I also have a speech bubble here that I die cut using the Say What gift tags, and it's just a speech bubble that's going to be for the front of my card. So I'm just going to start working on the assembly first. I'm folding along all of those scored lines, so the flaps that are going to connect together. And I'm just going to reinforce that with my uh, bone folder. 
I'm also going to do that to my inserts, but only on two of them. The other two, I will actually be trimming those tabs off. So these are the two I want. One of them is going to be for the background of my shadow box, and the other one will be for the front of my card. So I already went ahead and trimmed those tabs off. And now I'll start working on some of the assembly. I'm just going to go ahead and add the double-sided tape to those tabs and also the tabs for two of the inserts. So two of my inserts still have the tabs. The other two, I cut off the tabs. Now to assemble the shadow box, I'm going to just butt these two right up next to each other, remove the backing on that double-sided adhesive, and give that a good push down. Now you could have that tab on the outside of the box if you wanted. I'm okay with it being in the inside because I'm covering it up with this rectangle piece of cardstock that I die cut from Mermaid cardstock. So this is the background of my shadow box. I'm kind of creating a little scene in the back. And I just used a tape runner to adhere that down. This is one of the sand banks that I had trimmed those tabs off of. So I'm adding that to my background. And there's some of our scene. And then I can work on putting some of my images in here. So I wanted that Christmas tree in the background because it is a really nice big image. And the rest of this is kind of personal preference wherever you feel you want to add things. I have some of the seaweed and the rocks. Some of it you won't be able to quite see right away, but I still like adding it in there. A couple of my images, and I'm just adding these with the Lawn Fawn liquid glue. And this stack of presents came from Toboggan Together. I wanted a bigger stack of presents uh, for my background. Then I can work on adding those inserts. So you kind of just figure out where exactly you want these to be. This is my sandy bottom of my ocean. And once you have it lined up, I'm putting one of those tabs down just on the one side. Then I'll take that second insert, remove the backing of that double-sided adhesive, and that's forming the inserts for our shadow box. Now, I didn't push down real hard right away because I wasn't sure how high it would be. I wanted to make sure it was in perfect placement. Then once I'm happy with that, I'll remove that backing, fold over that left side, and that's going to attach both of our inserts together. Now, I did think about moving that sandbank forward a little bit more, but I didn't want to risk ripping my box. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the backing on that last tab to form our box. And then I just fold it back and forth because these do fit in an A2 size envelope. So I'm just going to fold that down back and forth and make sure that everything is holding together really well. And then I can start decorating the rest of my inserts. So I have a little sucker here. This actually came from the Sweet Christmas along with the candy cane that I had colored up. I just thought it was kind of a fun, uh, fit the Christmas scene really well. So some of them I'm using the liquid glue. You just wanna make sure that you don't have any of that glue kind of sticking out of, outside of that image because otherwise your box is going to stick together. Now I do have a fish that I wanted to kind of have popping up above everything. So I'm taking a piece of acetate and just trimming off a little thin strip. I'm gonna add a little bit of that double-sided adhesive to the top and the bottom and stick my little Santa fish on there. And then I can attach it behind there in my insert. So it looks like he is swimming up towards the Christmas tree. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna work on the cover. Uh, now this is kind of a cover for it. It reminds me of like a storybook. And this just gives me a little bit more room to write an additional message. So I trimmed off the tab on this one. This was die cut from the shadow box die. I trimmed off the tab. And you can see I'm just going to attach the side there. It's going to open up like a storybook. And I'm going to decorate the front of this. So using that rectangle that popped out from our window when we cut our shadow box, I'm taking that stitched oval that's also in the shadow box die. And I'm going to die cut out just a small oval window from here. So I'll hold that in place, in place with some low-tech tape. And then I trimmed down that fourth 
uh, sand bank that I had die cut earlier from the craft cardstock. So I trimmed that down to fit behind my window, decorated that with some of the extra rocks and seaweed that I have, and then I can trim off any excess that's hanging over and attach that to my card front. Now I also had some extra fish, so I'm gonna put the fish in there, just attaching those with some liquid glue. And here's that speech bubble. I thought this was a really cute addition to this. I'm adding that bloop. This is from the Critter Chatter stamp set, or Critter Chatter Pets. So I'm adding the bloop with the little exclamation point. And I'll have that be on the front of the card for the fish. And I'll also be using the translation sentiment on the inside. So kind of this fish wishing everyone the happy holidays. So I die cut, actually I just trimmed a piece of guava cardstock down to fit on the inside of my cover. And using my Misty tool, I'm going to stamp this in embossing ink. And I like to stamp mine twice because I don't want to push real hard the first time. So since I'm using the Misty tool, I can stamp it twice and that'll be a really nice inked up sentiment. And then I can sprinkle on the white embossing powder and heat set that with my heat tool. So we have bloop on the front of the card and translation is season's greetings. And then I can go ahead and just add this to the inside of my panel there. And then we could start working on attaching this and I'll just take double-sided adhesive and attach it to the panel that's gonna be connected on the side. The double-sided adhesive uh, holds really well so you can see it kind of lines up. It's going to open up like a book and we're just attaching it to that side panel. So at this point, I kind of thought I was done with the card. I had it attached. I felt like that sentiment panel was missing something. And as I was digging through some of my dies, I usually die cut quite a few things and then I save them for later if I have extra. And I'll give you a close up look here of the inside of the shadow box just real quick. And once I kind of started thinking about it, I decided to add a little bit extra to this card. So here we have the inside opening up into this really cute underwater Christmas scene. You could even add some of the glitter pen to this. You could add glitter to these, really jazz it up, give it a lot of sparkle. And, I, and that was what I felt like I was missing was some sparkle and something for that sentiment panel off on the side. So once I went digging through, I found... From my previous card, I still had some mini string of lights left over. So I trimmed that down to fit right above uh, my shadow box area. So I'm just going to take those and add those white bulbs to my noble fur uh, string of lights. And I still had some of those light bulbs die cut from glitter cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and attach those. I mean, we already have a Christmas tree underwater. Why not have a string of lights, right? And that made me happy because then I got my glitter in there. Now, also, I had some leftover snowflakes. This is why it's always good to save anything you die cut extra of. Because you just never know when it's going to work for another project. So once I have all of my string of lights added there. I'm just taking a little bit of that glue to the adding it to the top of the string of lights. Like I said, you want to be careful. You don't have any excess glue sticking out because you don't want your card to stick together. You want them to be able to open it up. It's so cute. I was so excited that that kind of popped into my head. And then I'm using some of those extra snowflakes to add to the front of the card as well. And I did add some around my sentiment on the inside panel. So I put a lot of those extra pieces to use. And that finishes off our underwater Christmas scene. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope it inspired you to create. Thank you so much for stopping by.